Hello guys, hello guys, welcome. This is Felipe Coelho and today we're gonna to have a special live. It's gonna be different from the other lives that I usually make on Friday. Today we're gonna to go a little longer, a little deeper into the learning. And first I just want to congratulate you for being here. Uh, we've worked a little hard on this, harder on this live to try to reach out for different people. And if you are here, it's because I want to congratulate you. It's because you are looking for your self-development and you're looking to reach higher places, fly higher altitudes. So welcome. Uh, my name is Felipe Coelho. For those of you who don't know me, I am a Brazilian guitar player. Uh, I have uh, produced eight records. I have toured uh, about 13 times, some of them internationally, some of them within Brazil and Latin America. And uh, I have a master's degree in music, which I uh, earned in the United States, in Georgia, Atlanta, uh, while I earned a full scholarships uh, as a Brazilian uh, guitar student. And during the pandemics, I had decided to become more of a YouTuber or an educator, as well as an artist digitally. You know, I had to go into this digital world, and then here I am. I discovered that this is one of my greatest passions. This is a live that I'm very excited because this is a live that I do only once a year. I think I might have done it twice in 2020. Um, but it's, it's a live where I feel like um, I'm doing what I was born to do. I feel very fulfilled when I'm uh, in this uh, live to present you the Brazilian music, the fundaments of Brazilian guitar. So this is what's gonna be this live all about. I wanna let you know that I have observed through a specific system of learning that you can learn the Brazilian guitar. I know sometimes it may be harder to do it alone or maybe a little harder to do it just instinctively. And instinct is a big part of this. Listening and imitating is a huge part of this. But there's also a science to this. And that's where this um, learning um, method has been created called DARP, which is D-A-R-P for dissecting, analyzing, reconstructing, and practicing. And this avoids exactly one problem, one common problem that we have when we try to learn uh, Brazilian guitar or any style by um, any style for that matter. And this, um, this one problem is practicing the wrong way. Practicing may be a two-edged sword. If you don't know what you're doing, you may be walking the wrong direction or you may be programming a different technique. And programming is a big part of this that we're gonna get into later. But practicing must be done with that observation before of dissecting music beat by beat, bit by bit. Dissecting it in the spheres of harmony and rhythm and then analyzing it, knowing where everything comes from, why things are happening. And only then you can rebuild with a total consciousness of what you're trying to do. It's a different feeling from that learning where you're learning but you're just sort of guessing, oh, maybe I played this note a little bit ahead of the time or a little bit behind, so maybe I'm gonna to try to put it a little bit ahead. There's no little bits in music. Music is heart, it's creativity, but it's also a science. It's also a method. And I can help you get there. And I believe what I can bring to the table is the fact that I've always been a very instinctive, intuitive musician, but I went to school and learned it as a science, you know, going through uh, many semesters of counterpoint and music theory and world music and, uh, count, uh, sorry, arrangement and piano, a bunch of things, you know, uh, up until the master's degree, which helped me see music a little in a different way, sort of like in a grid, in a very analytical way, at the same time as bringing in the heart, the creativity, which I'm all about, of course. Um, if you guys have any feedback for me, please uh, send me, just to let me know if the sound is good and if the image is good. I really want to give you the best experience today here. So, this, this method, this method, DARP, is the method that I like to use, and we're gonna see it into play today. My objective today is for you to get something that you can already use from today. I'm not here to just tell you the, the, the way you have to walk, but I wanna give you something that you're gonna be able to get out of here already using. Um, so, as I teach you about the Brazilian guitar, first I'm gonna let you know three mistakes that are commonly done. One, I have already said. It is practicing without consciousness, practicing the wrong way and programming your brain the wrong way. The other one is that Brazilian guitar is an exact uh, copy of the African batuki. The African um, music has been a, a, the mother of Brazilian music, really, or maybe I should say the father. 
because the father, I guess, is the rhythm. Again, I don't want to get into sexism <laughs> here, but um, it is a very, very important, at least 50% or more of Brazilian music comes straight from Africa. So you have that dual concept of the you know, two by four, the simplicity, the repetition, which takes you into a trance. So a lot of it is about dancing. It's about you know, joining with, with the, the greater one, just uh, being not, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, not uh, numerical, not scientific, but more about the heart. You know? And then we also inherited the um, Western counterpoint from the 16th or 18th century European composers that have left us uh, all the, the baggage of harmony and counterpoint and melody, and Brazilian music has all been created upon that. So these are the two main components of Brazilian music. So as we're, uh, I'm telling you the three big, big mistakes that people make is when you play Brazilian guitar, you have to see it as a percussion, as an African percussion, and then there are independent parts. Mainly there's gonna be two, the surdo, which is your bass drum, and the tambourine, which is the higher part. These two have to be independent, and that is the, big, the biggest mistake, or the most common mistake I see my students doing, <clears throat> is sometimes hitting a chord while playing with the thumb at the same time. So you're making a syncopation or an interesting rhythm here, but you're playing the thumb along with that. <clears throat> and you have to realize that the thumb is independent. It plays the downbeat. So these two parts are gonna be independent. Once you don't realize that, you're never gonna be able to get it. So that's one, uh, second, um, the second problem. And the third problem, and you have two, <clears throat> two different <clears throat> options for this. One is we cannot leave harmony alone. Alone, So we have to talk about harmony a little bit. It's just knowing the harmonized natural scale. You have to know the harmonized, the natural harmonized scale. You have to know the degrees. And if you can also know the names of their respective modes, that's just your basic obligation as a music student of any instrument, you know, because that's what's gonna let you navigate through the tunes, transpose the tunes, know the functions and the cadences. The cadences are the movements that make the harmony happen and a song move forward. It's always moving by cadences. So that's the, the, the key, that's the map for you to be able to play Brazilian music. These, these three elements, harmony, the rhythm, the independency for the African batuki, and of course, practicing with consciousness. So here we go, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm here to teach you about the basics of Brazilian music, and there's one basic concept which is called syncopation. This is the most important element or foundational element of Brazilian music because it's everywhere. It's simply everywhere. I, I, I could even show you an example here. Both in the melody aspect or rhythm uh, and harmony, all, all of these spheres, the syncopation is present. So for example, I could do um, a song by Javan that shows you how the, the Every melody entry happens in syncopation. I'm about to explain to you what syncopation is. So here it is, for example. Knows. This is a popular Javan tune that just came to mind right now, but it serves a great example. Every single note entry you heard me sing was syncopated. Felipe, what is syncopation? Syncopation is this. Now we come with the analytical part of this system of learning. We cannot run away from this. We cannot avoid this. The DARP system is dissect and analyze. So we are dissecting right now. Let's dissect together one beat. Normally in samba and bayon, afoche, all these rhythms, the the tempo, the quarter note, is divided in 16th notes. Brazilian music is mostly about 16th notes. Of course, you may encounter triplets here and there, but the swing feel from Africa is on those 16th notes. So you have to acknowledge them and feel them parallelly, both things. So you get this, four 16th notes in one beat. So you have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now, syncopation is this, is you picking out the second and fourth 16th notes. The one and the third is what we call the straight ones because they are right on the downbeat and right on the upbeat. Like so, ta, 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 ta. That's one and three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So first, it's unavoidable. You, you can't run away from doing this acknowledgement of the 16th note because we're gonna talk about this a lot. We're gonna be using it 
using it in every reference to the music that we do. Say, if you're hitting the, your finger on the, on the string on the wrong 16th note, I can tell you, you're hitting it on the third and it's supposed to be the second. That means before you even grab the guitar, you have to have total control and consciousness of the 16th notes. Syncopation is third, sorry, second and fourth 16th notes. So let's try to sing that together. Now I'm gonna insert here uh, on the screen, um, a little image of an idea of 16th notes, of, sorry, of uh, syncopation. First, I'm gonna just sing it to you. I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So picking up the second and fourth, sounds like this. Two, four, two, four. I'm clapping on one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, two, four, two, four. So learning how to sing that and how to feel that. I'm gonna tap my foot while clapping so I know where one is. One, 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 and a one, one. Now I'm gonna sing the second and fourth 16th notes. Take your time there and master this. If you can't get it now, then you need to stop this video later uh, because this live is gonna stay recorded for a few days and, and just stay on this exercise. No point in going forward if you can't do this. So that's where the method comes in. Don't take another step before you have done this. And this is also about my method of teaching. Um, of course, Anybody can learn anything, and I'm about to tell you a story about this. Anybody can learn anything as long as you use that dark method and you take only as much as you can chew at a time. Do not take a step that's larger than the size of your legs, of course. If you put these two things together, you can do anything. So I have a story to tell you exactly about this method of learning. It's, kind of, it's almost like a miracle, and it happened to me. And it's on the internet. You can even check it to see if it's true. Well, you guys know I'm Brazilian, right? I'm not Spanish. In Brazil, there's no flamenco. Flamenco is a very outside world from Brazil. I just happen to love it. So I'm, I'm very specific. I'm one of a few, very few guys in Brazil that also has um, uh, taken a, uh, a dive into flamenco. But that happened also kind of for, for um, the method, exactly, uh, of analyzing and dissecting and reconstructing and practicing music. So basically, this story begins when I was around 21 years old. I earned a record from Paco de Lucia, and I heard the tune Monasterio de Sal. Uh, this is the Palos of Colombianas in flamenco. And I was just totally mesmerized by it. It, it took me by the soul and by the heart and just grabbed me. And I, I felt like I have to learn this. I have no way out. I got I to gotta dedicate my life to be able to do this. I was so touched. I even get emotional as I'm <laughs> telling you. But then I was, seeing, I was looking at the Everest mountain. How am I gonna cl climb this huge mountain in front of me? And I could only take one step at a time, right? So I went to the first note of the tune, the very first note. And then the second note. And I could also hear and ask, uh, answer the first question. What is the tonality of this tune? The very first questions that you have to ask yourself. What's the pulse? What's the tonality? That's the beginning of the dissection. Dissecting means this. What is the rhythmic language? What is the subdivision implied? What is the pulse? What is the micro subdivision interpretation? Or in other words, the swing. Brazilian music, American music, they all have sort of a micro division, which I call it a micro subdivision, which is the swing. All these things have to be acknowledged at first before you even touch the instrument. So you're dissecting music and you're analyzing it. As you're answering these questions, you're analyzing the music and then you're beginning to know what you're, what you're do, doing. You're turning the light on, let's put it that way. There's no way of teaching music if you don't turn the light on. So you cannot run away from these terms. So the story goes like this. I dreamt of playing that tune. And then as the years went by, I decided to take it as a personal challenge to dissect the heck out of this tune. And it took me a few months. Patiently, I learned note by note its exact placement on the 16th note grid. The rhythmic interpretation, the rhythmic language, I took time to listen a lot to the rhythmic language. And that's one of the pillars of learning a language, is listening. We'll talk about the pillars later, but listen to the music. You're, you're, you're not being true, you're, you're being a fake if you wanna learn a certain language and you say you're passionate about it if you haven't spent time to listen to it, right? You have to, to listen to it. That's the most important. So I did all of these things and I dissected it and I understood it and I rewrote it. But as I rewrote it, as I uh, put it into my, my fingering on the guitar, because I did not have a visual 
on this. I learned it by ear from a record. YouTube uh, was just starting, but this video was not out there. So just to show you guys, those of you out there that sometimes complain about there not being uh, some lesson with a tablature, you know, I've, I've had, and many guys before me have had to learn so much just with a ear without having the visual and much less the, the tabs. But luckily for you, I do work with tabs as you have been seeing in my Instagram lately. I've been doing tabs for everything, so you guys are in good company, in good hands. All right, so that, let's get to the end of the story. I arranged this for a full string orchestra, my own arrangement. I rewrote the entire song as I understood the harmony, the cadences, the tonality, the harmonic paths, the melody, everything. I rewrote for the other instruments and I created a full arrangement for the Monasterio de Sal, which is, which is, um, uh, <laughs> which is on the internet, on YouTube. You, can, you guys can check it out later. So all right, that's about the method and let's go back to the content. So I'm teaching you here about the syncopation. So let's sing with me the picking of the second and fourth sixteenth notes. You have D4, one, two, D4, one, two, D4. If you have been able to do that, then we can pass it on to the guitar. I always, and Paco used to do this. Paco is one of my greatest, of course, references. And he used to say this. You have to, first singing something is, um, is more, um, just more basic because you don't have the obstacle of the guitar. So you can always check if you have understood something rhythmically by first singing it and knowing what you're looking for. All right, uh, by the way, uh, by the way, I do have a, a small uh, reminder for you guys here. Uh, we are gonna learn today one full tune by the end of this class, which is a tune that I chose that you might have seen in the ads of this lesson, the Masquinada. Uh, by the end of the, today's lesson, we're gonna be playing that tune, hopefully, or we're gonna go much uh, profoundly into it. And I'm gonna give you, for the guys that stay uh, in this uh, till the end, I'm gonna provide with a gift of a free PDF with all the content that we do here, along with the PDF of the Masquinada with tabs. All right, so having said that, let's put the syncopation onto the guitar. So I have here an example of a C being played on the bass, and that's your downbeat. So you have to count like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And first, before we do what's written on the screen, we're gonna just play the E string on every 16th note. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I have to see this in my mind as subdivisions. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now what if I asked you to play only the second 16th note? How about only the fourth sixteenth note now? One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Now you realize how much counting is important and how much feeling your count is important. That's how I'm feeling this. Now the second and the fourth. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you have been able to do this, you have just unlocked the first step, <clears throat> the first pillar of playing Brazilian guitar. This is the most common mistake I see, is people playing Brazilian music without having mastered this simple concept, simple, however, not so easy, concept of the syncopation. <clears throat> so a tap on, on the back for you. Now we're gonna go on and take that into a harmonic situation. We're gonna add a chord to this, and it's gonna be what I'm gonna call the syncopation exercise number one. <clears throat> syncopation exercise number one uses a Brazilian chord. We're already looking at harmony simultaneously here. This is called the G major 7 13th. I believe that's uh, the chord that's written on the example. Um, let me see, not yet. All right, so here, here's the G major 13th, and we're gonna syncopate it by doing the bass here, and the second and fourth sixteenth note and you're gonna begin sounding Brazilian and we're gonna even sing a tune just with this kind of accompaniment for example I'm gonna speed it up a little bit just so you can see the power of the pure syncopation we haven't even started claves yet and we haven't started the, con the concept of call and answer the African batuki concept of call and answer but just this one layer already can get you swinging like this Oh, 
So that all was accompanied by the simple concept of syncopation. No clavis yet, no inversion of phrasing, nothing. Just the simple concept, which is the ground. The, the syncopation is the ground for what we're about to build. So have you guys gotten this? Please uh, write me here. Better now, thank you, sorted, all right, all right. Well guys, can you play Brazilian music with a steel string guitar? I prefer to be on a string guitar. What about, uh, yeah, you could play on a steel string guitar, but, but the nylon string guitar is gonna get you more of the sound that, that is the nature, the identity of the Brazilian guitar. Okay, so now having done this, uh, I'm gonna show you the concept there of the um, syncopation number one exercise. We can do together like this. One, two, uh, uh, one, two. A little secret that I'm gonna give away here is this hand does a major work rhythmically. You can do a staccato, which creates a nice, you know, dynamical tool when you're performing. You do a staccato here by releasing, by releasing the the, the finger as, as soon as you play. By the way, I am using a seventh string here, but you can simply ignore the string. It's exactly the same as the sixth. And everything I do here, I'm not gonna use the seventh string today. So just when you see me pressing the string before my lowest one, that's my sixth, all right? So this is a G note, sixth string, not seventh. I may even probably, you know what I'm gonna do for you guys today? I'm gonna, should I take my seven out? No? All right, I almost got naked here. All right, so, um, so then now we're gonna ex uh, introduce the uh, syncopation exercise number two. We're simply gonna do a harmonic dialogue between the one and the five. The five in harmony is the fifth degree. Every key has seven degrees or seven little homes in a street. And the fifth one is what, what, the one we call the dominant because it creates tension to resolve back to one. And that's what a song is all about, is always taking a walk in the park to resolve back to one, meaning to go back home, right? We always go back home to sleep every night, right? So this is the dominant chord, is a D, and in this case it's being voiced with a ninth right here. I always like to look at the chords as, um, as intervals. So, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna look mostly at rhythm today. These intervals I do teach in a Brazilian course that I have, which I'm gonna tell you later on about today, if you stay at the end. But uh, for now, this is a D7-9, all right? So here's a D7-9, and then we're gonna have this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you guys can do this, you're already halfway to playing the tune. Now notice the staccato. I'm playing it, and I'm releasing. Instead of, that's something else you can do. So you see about these dynamical tools to create different sounds just by either holding the hand or the chord or the staccato. The staccato is important in Brazilian rhythm because it's like playing a little drum. The drum doesn't have such a um, long sustain, you know, the note plays and dies out. So sometimes you want to go pop. So all right, so have you guys done the syncopation exercises so far? Can I talk about the first clave of the first Brazilian rhythm we're gonna to learn today? Are you guys ready for this? The seventh string is tuned in B. Yes, guys, all right. So let's look at the bossa nova two beat clave. The bossa nova two beat, I believe, is the first Brazilian rhythm, and I'm gonna show you a few tunes that we can do just with this one simple little rhythm. All right, so let's look at it first. When you see that, you have two eighth notes. Eighth notes I didn't talk about, I talked about straight about the 16th notes. The eighth notes are easier, it just divides a beat into two halves, first half and second half. So it sounds like this. One and, two and, ta, 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 ta. So that is the, the eighth note, and the bossa nova starts with two eighth notes, like this. One and, two and, ta. Here I'm gonna use a C major seven nine chord. The interval C, third major seven and ninth. Uh, but I, we won't look at an intervals today. Uh, I'll be looking at that in uh, the Brazilian course. So here we go with a C major seven nine. 
bossa nova. Ba, ba. Second beat is where the syncopation happened. Right here. Ba, ba, da. That's the syncopated note. Second sixth, sixteenth. That's why the concept of syncopation must be down for you. You have this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, actually, that was a G. Yeah. <laughs> we have the G major six in there. Sorry, guys. The notes that are written on there are for this chord. So here. Da, da, da. Okay. Here's a song by Jobim. Just with that rhythm, alright? progressions later on all right if you guys want to, to talk about that I did receive some emails from you guys saying that you wanted to do uh, to uh, learn a little bit about the uh, chord progressions and I can show you a few if you stick I'm just gonna uh, fulfill here my script that teaching uh, which is about teaching the rhythm mostly which is the biggest secret I believe to be of the Brazilian guitar so going on that's the bossa nova now let's introduce the next step here to the lesson the four beat bossa nova clave is about to appear here on the screen so we're gonna use this Bossa Nova Clave, which you have just done. Da, 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 da. Every time I have a chord with a bass on the fifth string, I alternate with the fifth. As this is explained on the PDF that I'm gonna be uh, giving to you guys at the end of this lesson. I'm gonna release a PDF with all the material that we worked on today, along with my own arrangement of the Mais Quenada. Mais Quenada is, is that tune. That tune I just got carried away here sorry guys uh, that tune in accompaniment style and finger style if we have time but at least the PDF I'm gonna give you as a gift and this PDF is part of the secrets Brazilian uh, guitar course which at the end of this meeting I'm gonna let you guys know the ones who, who want to stay and hear about it so going on guys the four beat bossa nova basically is gonna be like this you're gonna now start with a syncopation onto the second beat so you have this Ta, 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 or uh, set, four beat bossa nova. Ta, 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 ba, 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 ba. So you see that beats three and four are exactly the same as beats one and two of the two beat bossa nova. Now we're adding two up front. We're adding this ta, 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 right? Ta, ta, ta. So that's exactly as written. You have. Um, a dotted eighth note and then a sixteenth note that is th like this one two three four right one two three four those are the notes you're playing so one two three four once again one two three four one two three four and the whole beat is like this you can use this as long as you like 
And of course, as you get better at this, uh, you see there are many configurations that can create different claves. And the masters, like João Gilberto, for example, great master of bossa nova, he, of course, he understood the basics of it. And then you start to improvise within that language. But in order to get there, first you must know these fundamentals. So you're better off memorizing, for example, these two examples. And then later, we can discuss many different variations. But this is a great place to start. Se você disser que eu desafio um amor Não saiba que isso em mim provoca imensa dor Só privilegiados Não tenho ouvido igual ao seu Eu possuo apenas o que Deus me deu Se você ensina... That's a great tune called Desafinado By Tom Jobim as well uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in this PDF, I, I have been getting a lot of these questions lately. People want me to make them playlists or lists of artists and pieces that they should listen to in order to understand, of course, and familiarize themselves with the Brazilian style. So in this PDF I'm going to give in the end of this lesson, I have made a specific list of my own favorite artists, which I believe to be great influences. And uh, from different Brazilian subgenres. in Brazil you have a great variety of music. You have the northern style, more based on Bayon the mediumish sort of style from Sao Paulo, Rio de Samba. Then you have the southern style of chamamé, um, uh, milonga, and, and the ones influenced by Argentinian music. And you ha even have a school of Brazilian music within, uh, for example, Belo Horizonte, uh, which is the Musica Mineira. It's a different type of Brazilian music, very special, very melodic, very beautiful, that gave birth to guys like Milton Nascimento or Toninho Horta, or uh, the moderns, uh, uh, Daniel Santiago or Pedro Martins. So these guys are all great, uh, uh, great figures that represent different styles in Brazilian music. So if you stick around, you're gonna get this PDF with this list of artists that you can check out. So are we done with the bossa guys? Can we talk about samba? Please, can we talk about samba? <laughs> enough, enough with the 101. <laughs> enough with the first graders, right? Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, the support. Uh, please send me questions. I hope to be giving you guys uh, some kind of help. So going on, samba, that's what we're here for. That is the heart of Brazilian music, right? Samba. Before I teach samba, let me play a samba. Vamos botar o samba aqui para eles botar? This is the next arrangement I'm gonna be recording in my uh, channel. Uh, we're about to go into samba, okay? I'm gonna teach you the secret and the clave of samba based on the concept we just worked on of syncopation. As you're doing this, try to, um, uh, as you're waiting for the samba clave, make sure that you can count 16th notes. This is kind of a fast one here. <laughs> so, wait, ah. Uh, so this is, uh, this is Carnaval today, it starts Carnaval in Brazil. So that's why I decided to bring this Escola de Samba here with me, this uh, rhythmic background of Brazilian music. This is some hardcore samba. That's why I'm wearing the Brazilian shirt. And here we go, guys. This is called Influencia do Jais.
All right, guys, so that's Influencia do Jais, is a tune that I was uh, arranging last week and uh, thinking about recording in the channel because of the carnaval, clima de carnaval, uh, the, the carnaval mood that's happening here in Brazil, it's just parties everywhere. I even broke a sweat from playing that tune. So yeah, all right, so samba, what is samba all about? Samba is the call and answer aspect of music that came from Africa, from the African batuki. There's always this communication. Always this conversation, it's a rhythmic conversation, and samba is exactly that. So in samba, we're gonna have a straight set, a set of straight eighth notes, like this. Okay, three eighth notes. And then you answer with the same eighth notes, you answer with them syncopated, like this. Those are the second and fourth sixteenth notes we worked on the beginning of this lesson. If you have not mastered the beginning of that lesson, don't even have to watch the, I mean, you can watch the rest of this, but you need to master that, right? You need to work on this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. If you can't pinpoint those timings, then you, can, you will not be able to play this. I'm sorry, I just have to be honest. I'll be lying if I told you <laughs> that you can. All right, that's your responsibility is practice that. That's just one bite, you can chew that, I'm sure. If you need help, you're welcome to send me a message later on and I can try to help you break this down even, even in smaller pieces, but that should be doable, all right? Uh, uh, clave. Sim, uh, clave na tela. All right, so we're gonna put the samba clave here and it starts with the eighth notes, ta, ta, ta. And then from beat two on to beat three, you do the syncopation figure. You start the syncopated eighth notes. And I call eighth notes it's because they are tied together. So it sounds like an eighth note, but it's just being displaced. It's an eighth note starting either from the second or fourth sixteenth note. So anyways, no further words. Let's just solfege this. One e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the ta 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 If you can sing it, you can play it. Ta 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 ta. Now notice the detachment of the finger on the syncopation part. Here's a hint: the syncopation part happens here. Ha, uh, does not ever collide with the finger, does not ever play together. Only on the straight eights. Only then. That's the first thing I told you right there in the beginning of this masterclass was the com most common mistake I see is, um, the, first the, no, um, the first common mistake I see is people uh, playing Brazilian music and not detaching the function of the thumb from the function of the tambourine. Surdo and tambourine. Surdo is downbeats. Boom, kapoom, kapoom. And the rhythmic figure that dances over that is this one that you improvise more. But you have to have that boom, 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 right? Otherwise, you don't go into the trance. You won't uh, make the room dance, right? So it's all about that dancing, you know? I, I, that's one of the things that I, I my personal secret. <laughs> is that I love to dance and I love to just put some music on and feel the music in my body and I believe that helps me play guitar. When I play guitar, I feel like there's a bit of a feeling the, the beat in your body. So I'm all for that. You have to listen to music if you want to play an instrument and you have to dance in your body if you want to you know, play an instrument with all your, your heart. So, okay, <clears throat> let's go on here. So let's play this together now. Samba clave. Clave uh, one, because there's clave two, but I think we're gonna stay on this one for, for today. Here we go. And now what we're gonna do is, this is a G minor chord. Okay, this is a ton tonic, minor seven, minor third, and fifth. Don't forget I have a seven string guitar, so we ignore that. This is my sixth string. Now this seventh is going to be changing between seven and what we call the major sixth. I do have a lesson that's all on the intervals of the guitar, but I will not unfortunately have time to go into this today. But I understand if you are 
you know, if this is new to you, I understand. But I have to say, it is part, however, of the DARP method. When uh, the DARP method, for those of you who came in late, the DARP method is dissect, analyze, reconstruct or rebuild, and practice, practice the right way. Um, so part of dissecting and analyzing is, uh, in order to do that, you have to know your intervals, right? And when I say intervals, I'm talking about this, like a second, minor third, major third, uh, perfect fourth, sharp four, fifth, flat six, major six is where we are at at this point, flat seven, major seven, and octave. And then everything starts all over again, minor second, major second, minor third, major third. That's just your, you know, your ABCs. You cannot play music in depth. Before you realize this, even, even the guys, the people that uh, say they are self-taught, which many of them are, uh, they realize this some way or another. Maybe they gave their own names to these things, but they realize that the activity in music happens in the relationships between notes. It is the relationships that, brings about, that bring about the feelings you know, that are born from when the notes are played together. It's all about intervals, that's the matrix of music. One of these days on my YouTube channel, in the Samba Basics video, I said that, that this was the matrix of music and I actually used the, the scene of the matrix when Neo sees all the, the numbers, right? <laughs> so that's how I feel about music. Uh, the Samba was a 2-4 or 4-4? Four, four? Samba was 4-4. Four, four. And how long have you been playing? I have been playing since around the age of seven, I believe, or, or six. Um, and yeah, that sample is 4-4 four, four because you have this one and two, three and four, and one and two, three and four, and one and two, three and four. And it's kind of hard to count and play the syncopation at the same time, but I, I kind of did it there. So here you're going to be doing the seven to the six. tools that I, that, you know, I can be showing you as we go along, but one of them comes from Baden Powell, is the art of once you have understood, you can sing the clave to yourself, you can be, begin adding more subdivisions with your right hand, like this. The accents are still the same, I'm just filling in with more 16 notes. in here so I can see. Me ajuda aqui. Bota o meu pastor de Felipe Coelho e bota na live. So going on guys, um, what happens next is that what we call a 2-5-1 here. You have a C minor, 7 with a 9th, to an F7, 13th. These chords are going to be on the PDF that I'm, gonna, uh, that I'm about to make available here. So you got C minor 9th. This, go ahead and start looking at the guitar in this way. This is a minor 3rd. It will always be a minor 3rd. Minor third is a note that make, creates a minor chord, and it's sad sounding. One, three, two, one, three. So that's why it's a C minor. Felipe Coelho com Felipe Coelho com letra maiúscula, F e C. Aí, F dominant, F thirteenth. So you got a thirteenth right here, third and a seventh. So you have this. written right here on the screen, right here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then we go on to the uh, actual verse of the tune. Starts with this chord, many call it the Jimi Hendrix chord, but from a theoretical point of view, it is a D dominant with a sharp nine. I do have much material in harmony, but unfortunately we're not gonna be able to go into it today. One second, guys. <clears throat> All right. So, guys, um, the continuation of this tune, grab this chord, D7, sharp 9. D7, tonic 3rd, 7, and a sharp 9. That's where the lyrics go. <clears throat> and 
in the club is ba, 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 ba. just this is an exercise that if you are able to do this today we have already taken a few important steps think of it being as one two three four one two three four the one and two are straight da, da, da. tambourine together with a surdo and the three and four <coughs> Excuse me. The three and four are syncopated. Da, da, da. Straight. Da, da, da. Syncopated. The syncopation, the tambourine never goes together with the thumb. Never. Here's the syncopation exercise number one. Now on G minor. This is just to make sure that you have made the basis of what I'm trying to teach you here, right? You have to make your part, it's a commitment. I can make you a promise, I can teach you Brazilian guitar, I promise that, but you have to make your part, which is to do exactly what I tell you. Commit to these exercises. In order to do this, you have to learn syncopation. Here's the syncopation. So let's try the verse of this tune. Three and four and. Now I'm gonna sing it. One more advice. On the D chord, you can always alternate, as I told you today, alternate between the tonic and the fifth. So we have this. Now I'm gonna sing and you play with me. Mais que nada, sai da minha frente que eu quero passar. Pois o samba está animado. Eu quero é samba. Were you guys able to follow me? Please uh, write me a message. Uh, Logo aqui para mim no, no, no YouTube. Vamos ver se restaurar. All right. So, can you guys do this with me? I'm about to look at your at your comments here. Uh, my computer died. <laughs> That's professionalism. So uh, I'm going to uh, be able, now I'm opening the chat again so I can get back to you guys. All right. Let me see what we have here. You must be what 20 now. No, <laughs> I'm not 20. <laughs> I'm 41. <laughs> All right. Grande lesson, successo. Thank you. All right. It's not confusing for you. The music alphabet from the English to Portuguese for me was not so much. It's okay. Uh, music Academy, by the way, I love the excitement in your teaching. Thank you, iMusic Academy. Thank you so much. The joy in your playing and teaching is obvious. Thank you so much. Best rhythm book you encountered that you can recommend. You know what? <laughs> I have just released my first book, which is 11 uh, arrangements of PDF written in detail of 11 uh, Brazilian tune selections. So uh, I can give you guys a link for this book here in a second. Can they a link for the... But yeah, it's not a book though, it's a, a video book, you can call it that way. So it has all the arrangements and the, the, the books and uh, the written PDFs and cheat music, of course. But as far as another rhythm book, man, I would not know, but you can, I'm sure you can find exercise on YouTube and Google. I'm sure that's where I would go. It's included on the course. Yeah, it's good. This is, um, the, and this information, this, um, this, uh, all these PDFs are also included in the Secrets of Brazilian course, which I'm only gonna talk about in the end of this meeting for those of you who would like to know about it. So, going on here with the comments, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, I'm on the Lopez, best rhythm book you encountered that you can recommend. I, ha I have not encountered the best one. Samba always needs to be played with feeling and excitement. That's what makes it contagious while listening. Exactly, I agree with you, I agree with you. I meant played eye music. Um, okay. Uh, aqua tu. I'm loving this session. Thank you guys, awesome session. It sounds amazing, but I'm on advice. I'll probably take your course. Thank you. Uh, this is only gonna be in the end of this meeting. So, okay, I think I've answered everything. Keep going, I can follow. All right, thank you guys, let's go on. Verse. Now is a new chord. This is called the G dominant chord. This is gonna be on the PDF later. For now, I'm using this voicing. Six string G, third dominant, and major third again. What is this chord doing? From a quickly harmonic point of view, this is called a secondary dominant. Every particular chord in the natural harmonized scale has 
a secondary dominant, which is a personal dominant. It's a personal fifth degree. What is a dominant chord? That I also teach in the course, but I can just give you a quick overview here. I'm trying to squeeze that in because it's not in my script. But a dominant chord, there's five types of chord. And these five types of chord, they are defined by what kind of third, fifth, and seventh you have above that tonic. So you have a one tonic note, one third, either major or minor third, either diminished or perfect or augmented fifth, and either diminished or minor or major seventh. That's what creates all, all the chords. The dominant chord is a unique chord. There's only one per key. And the dominant chord is made of tonic, major third, perfect fifth, and minor seventh. Okay? So that's your da, 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 da. That's your dominant chord. And this chord is the chord that creates tension for you to resolve usually a fourth above. So I have a G dominant chord, secondary dominant of C, because it's a fourth above. Two, three, four. So I resolve. So you play this chord right before the B section of this tune. We are about to cross the half of the tune. And at the end, I'm going to give you the PDF with the chord melody style, like such. a few months that I haven't played that arrangement, so <laughs> I had to do it by memory real quick here. I didn't prepare that. But anyways, it's a, such a fun tune to sing. And that's a great crowd pleaser, you know. If I ever play a gig, like, you know, just uh, a gig, uh, and I pull that tune, uh, people always tend to love it. They even get up and dance and whatever. So it's always a great crowd pleaser. Okay, so now going on to the B part, we have done that secondary dominant to create tension to go on to the C minor. And here's the B part. Listen to the samba clave. Da, 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 da. That's the samba clave for you there. On a silver platter. One more time. Sorry. samba de preto velho samba de preto do That's it guys, it's just two part song. You know, you have the beginning and the, the, the B part, and that's all. The, the, again, the intro is oh, 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 oh. I like to do that chromatic passage from D minor ninth to C minor ninth. Very smooth, very Brazilian. Oh, 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 oh. Ariana, yo. Right? And then you have the verse. Watch the clave. This is all about teaching the clave here. I don't wanna just, you know, get you guys drunk by the music and not pay attention to the actual study. The science is important here. It's not just party. <laughs> so we got the, the, the clave here. Da, 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 da. No, don't ever forget that bone structure. This is what makes everything happen. This is what locks the whole school of samba together. This is what makes every part meaningful. So you can't just make your own clave as you go. You have to know the clave. That's the fundament. Right? So that's two fundamentals, two pillars of Brazilian music I have already given you today. The syncopation and now the clave. These things, guys, if you don't get familiar with these things, your Brazilian music is going to be a little confusing. Syncopation and clave, that's where it's all at. Okay, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the secrets right here, all right? So once again, um, uh, well, let, me, let me make sure. All right, we're good. Um, going on, let's talk about a little bit of the harmony over this tune. This is the third pillar that I have not spoken much about yet and how we could 
for example, improvise. For those of you out there who are a little bit more advanced or not total beginners, uh, I tend to, uh, to educate and to show the Brazilian music uh, to people from all kinds of levels. I've, I've picked up and helped people f from zero, and sometimes I do help uh, very talented professionals. So here, uh, for those of you who uh, like improvisation and jazz-influenced music, there has been born this style called Brazilian jazz, which is the, the, the total fusion of all the, the improvisation language, which is also very present in the Brazilian choro, but in a, in a more uh, traditional fashion. Um, and then we have to, this world to explore, which I believe I, believe I did a little bit in that take, uh, previous take of the uh, influence of the jazz. So when you're gonna improvise, first you need to know the modes of these, these chords. We're in the key of G minor, what does that mean? The key of G minor, basically has seven chords. G minor is your one, right? The second chord, after one, you're gonna treat this as an Aeolian. So first you need to draw a map. Nós temos aí a informação do harmonized scale. Tava aí no sol maior, lembra? So there's a map we're gonna pull up and put on the screen here in a second. There's a map of seven chords. It's called, um, I'm gonna put it in B flat here, so we can do the G minor. B flat, be your one, so it's major Ionian, C minor, second degree Dorian, D minor, third degree Phrygian, E flat major would be your fourth degree Lydian, F dominant is your Mixolydian, then you have G minor, it's the relative to B flat, G minor is your Aeolian, and A half diminished or Locrian. So this is the family of G minor. This is very important for you to know when you begin learning Brazilian music. If you want to play it for real, if you want to have fun with it, dominate, navigate through it, and be able to accompany singers in any tonalities, you must get familiar with this stuff. There's no faking around. There's no learning from the tabs and not knowing what the heck is going on. So you want to turn the light on in your musical you no know, relationship with the instrument, your relationship with music. So this is what turning the light on means. It may hurt a little bit because it has to, you have to, to think, you know, and dedicate attention, but it pays off in the end 10 times fold for sure, or even more. So in the key of G minor, we're gonna have two chords here that are straight, uh, they have a straight relationship with D minor, G minor. They are C Dorian and D Phrygian. And that's where pretty much the, the tune is built. So you have this, oh, you can add that six there, which pretends to make this G minor as, a, as if it was a Dorian. So it's using, it's wearing a carnival mask. It's what it's doing. <laughs> Today is the first day of carnival here in Brazil. So it's faking, it's wearing some color. But when it goes here, the C minor is enough to make sure that this G was actually Aeolian and not Dorian. And then you have D Phrygian. So you have this. That's one of the ways you can do. Another way is you can replace the D minor chord for a F dominant chord. All right? That's another way you can do. Watch that. You can always play with that minor 7, 6, minor 7, 6. It's a little tricky. You have to switch finger, but you know, life is just life. Right? <laughs> All right, so what if we're an improvise, gonna improvise on this? <clears throat> when you improvise, I tend to work, again, the DARP method, dissect, analyze, rebuild, and practice. So dissecting means this. G, what is a G minor Aeolian? What are the notes that make part of this chord? Tonic, minor third, perfect fifth, and minor seventh. Where are they? Let's dissect and analyze. Here they are. I don't have a chart for this. I do in the, in the Brazilian uh, guitar course, but for now, just, just bear with me. See if you can figure out this arpeggio. One flat three, five minor seven. Tonic minor third, five, seven, and one. I know for the newcomers, for the people that are starting from zero, this may be a little over their heads, but this hopefully is attending and helping the guys that are a little more advanced, right? So you have, this is your responsibility to be able to break a chord down do it in any rhythmic fashion. Or you can alternate notes like this. Right? So that's in, in order for you to have, um, to have vocabulary. You have to be able to 
gain freedom within that set of rules. What is the set of rules? The rhythmic subdivision, taka, 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 or any clear intended subdivision. Don't just throw notes up in the sky. It doesn't work. <laughs> And uh, the other awareness is the harmonic and melodic awareness, right? I'm playing over G minor here. So I know what the, those notes are. And then as I change chord, I want to try to respect that chord change. Right, so if I'm improvising here on G minor. Go C minor. And then D minor. Back to G. One more time, G minor. Instead of the D, I'm gonna use the F7. I think it might sound better. G minor. So that's what the improvisation is mostly based around of is Chord tone focus, chord tone approximation, meaning you're always gravitating towards those chord tones. So that does take uh, practice. You know, I've been practicing this for many years, but at least I have learned the things that have taken uh, more time, the things that were, uh, that were useless, because there are some mis practicing mistakes, and I've been able to sort of pick out what works and what takes me to my objective faster. And, of course, one of these things is practicing with awareness, like in the DART method. You first analyze and uh, you break up, analyze, and then you rebuild and practice. So rebuilding is like making a sequence. For example, this one. I've had to think about that before, of course. I'm not just making it right now. And then once I thought about what I was doing, I could practice it. So that seems dumb, but it's, a lot of people don't do it that way. And they maybe just run their fingers and try to hope that it makes some sense. So uh, you have to definitely uh, put the things into place. Uh, but there's a lot. Um, is there any questions here that uh, Fantastic knew about the course? I'm looking forward to be able to take part. Uh, that's great, man. Just stick till the end. I'm just trying to help out as many people as I can here for now. And then within the end, probably within another hour, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, get you guys started about uh, this, this uh, wonderful course that we're gonna take time, take uh, a look into. So anyways, guys, uh, going on, <clears throat> uh, well, there's so much to talk about. Um, let me just do a little more phrasing here. On the song, you're gonna have the two, five, one. Yes, I wanted to get to that. The two, five, one is the most important progression that happens in Brazilian music. If you know a two, five, one, you will, you already know a, a part of a chord structure that happens. So two, five, one is this. If we're in a key of B flat, two is the two is C, because C is the second. Right? B flat is the first, C is the second. And then... No mice. Then the, the uh, F is your five, because it's B flat is one, two, three, four, five, so you play a dominant chord here on the five, and that's a two, five, one, like this. C minor, F7, and B flat. And I've made a few short videos on my YouTube that have examples of voicings and improvisation over this. This is something you definitely want to put your hands on and do as many variations as you can, as such, like a C minor, F7. You can invert it and do it anywhere. C minor, F7, C minor, F7, C minor, F7, C minor, F7, or here. So you, have, you want to really dive into the neck and look into the caged system, for example, which is also something that um, I, I didn't prepare to look into today, but I'm just giving you the path here. Look into the caged system in order, if you haven't um, acknowledged these positions yet. The guitar has five positions, right? You have the C position, the A position, the G position, the E, and the D. They all come from these chords, C, A, G, uh, E, and D, right? But you're just spreading them on the neck. You really want to do that, all right? All right, uh, any, any guys, uh, any questions here, guys? Can I go on to talk about the, I think so. So guys, um, I have, uh, <clears throat> I, won't, I won't lie to you that I spent many years to uh, be able to master this information. This is not something that comes very easily. 
And um, this is obviously not something that I could just teach you in an hour and a half or two hours. So for those of you guys who are interested, first I'm gonna keep my word to you and I'm going to release right now a link of my PDF here that, uh, já falei agora dá. Uh, release my a PDF uh, of this tune, this tune that I just uh, sent you and uh, a PDF of the claves that we just worked on that appeared here on the screen. So this is a PDF, it's just a part, it's just one bit of a whole structure of lessons that I have put together, which I believe has uh, from 10 to 12 hours of recorded material and PDFs of 11 arrangements and rhythm uh, sections. Mostly the PDFs are for the rhythm sections. Now this is called the Secrets of Brazilian Guitar Full Course. And basically the Secrets of Brazilian Guitar Full Course touches on every pillar, of course, of Brazilian music, which are, uh, you can answer for me now, the rhythm, right, syncopation, the rhythm, and the uh, harmony. We could even say the repertoire, there's so many of them, there's more than three pillars. So uh, we have many modules, I think three or four modules only on rhythm, going from the African rhythms, the northern rhythms, the southern rhythms of Chamamé. Have, um, a variety of things uh, in Brazil. There's um, so many um, rhythmic uh, facets, so many styles, subgenres in Brazilian music. And in this course, I touch on every one of them, especially the rhythm is the one that we spend most time in. And then, of course, you have the basics of music theory and harmony, going through all the harmonized scales natural harmonized scale, melodic minor harmonized scale. Um, minor, harmonic minor, and harmonic major. And then the dominant scales, uh, the symmetrical scales, uh, the whole tone scale. The diminished scale, the diminished dominant scale, all these things, there's just so much to talk about. It's kind of pointless to try to teach everything here and now because it would be an overload of information for an hour. So I'm, I'm just naming these things out just so you know. But this is a very complete course and this is the seventh time, I believe, or sixth time, For the Brazilian, I think it's the fourth, but I also have created the World Music Guitar Course, all this during the pandemics. It has been, become something very important to me. And uh, one of the good points about this is that it's a platform that I keep feeding and you have lifelong access to. So just this year, I fed 11, this and last year, sorry, 2022, I fed in their 11 new arrangements, uh, PDF written specifically by me for the guitar. And um, I'm continuously feeding it with more information. Now this platform has uh, 10 to 12 hours of recorded lessons, all the repertoire of tunes that you can learn both uh, accompaniment and chord melody. And it has, the, uh, has even a part on nail care and a part on seven string. And there's an important aspect of bass, of Brazilian music we haven't spoken about, which is bass lines of choro, which is the style when a guitar accompanies higher pitched instruments that do the melody. Essentially, the Brazilian guitar is actually an accompaniment instrument. And in the Roda de Choro by Gino Sete Cordas, is the main figure of Brazil that has created this style. Instead of playing chords like this, they, they accompany with bass counterpoint. So here you have a D minor, a G7, and a C. You can create lines like such. So there's a lot to say about this um, style of playing. There's a lot to, to um, go over and teach. And uh, the, this course does cover that. Now, the, the main points about this is that uh, this course is actually uh, 12 hours of recorded material, 10 to 12. And we also do eight lives for every time that we present this course. That means that we get to get my personal assistance twice a month for four months. I'm going to be checking in with you guys. Um, and. Uh, 
we are at the end of this live opening a new group of students. For those of you who have stuck with me until this point, it means you are interested. I congratulate you if you have been able to learn these basics that I have showed you. Um, uh, tinha perguntas importantes aqui? É melhor te falar, cara. Tu ficar gesticulando, eu não vou entender nada. Não, okay. Tá. So, guys, going on. Um, eight lives that uh, I'm compromising to doing with you guys. Um, we're opening for one week a new group of students. At the end of this live, there's going to be a link that is going to be given to you guys here in a few minutes. And basically, um, once you sign up, um, we're going to have an, a new group of students entering and this is going to be stay open for a week, the registration period. And then the people that do go in, they have access to the platform, lifelong access and to all of the uh, uploads that I keep making. Uh, the, the course is much more mature right now because we started three years ago and we've gotten so much feedback from more than 200 students. And um, we've been able to add more information to there and we are probably going to um, even replace uh, some of the videos that are there for uh, better ones that I have noticed that um, through the feedback that I have been receiving uh, could be even more complete. So I'm going to, uh, at the end of this live, open the cart and uh, you must be asking yourself uh, right now, how much is this going to cost? So basically, as I explain this to you, I would put it this way. Basically, I charge $50 uh, for a session, for a personal uh, private lesson. Now, this course has, this course has um, 12 hours of uh, uh, recorded material. And if you multiply that 12 hours by 50, you're going to have 900. Plus, you get access to a community that is exclusively on, is exclusive only for the students that have signed up before and that are signing up now. In this community, I post stuff there that I don't post neither on YouTube or Instagram, but it's not really about me. What is about me there is the feedback. I compromise to the guys that are there to give, give them my feedback to everything they post, only for the students of the Secret Brazilian Guitar. So through the communication of the old students and the new students, there's always a feeding of energy. And it's what I want to do. It's I want to build a culture. I want to, for the Brazilian guitar art form to be more recognized out there. And I think it deserves that, you know? But the problem that I noticed in this advantage that I can bring to the table is the fact that I learned English from living in the States for nine years. So sometimes I look for uh, information on Brazilian guitar in English and it's very, very limited. There's almost no stuff in there, out there. So I felt like this might be my, my spiritual calling <laughs> was to fulfill that, that important duty of bringing the Brazilian guitar to light, bringing it to the opportunity of the people from any other country, right? So that's what this community is all about. So some of these communities, for, for example, they're, they charge a hundred bucks per year. So let's say if this community was charged a hundred dollars per year to get all that personal feedback from me. It's almost like private lesson, but it's made on mostly feedbacks and questions. If that was $100 a year, plus the 50 times 12 hours, you'd have exactly $1,000. However, uh, even though you have that sum, qual é o preço mesmo do curso então? It is gonna be just for $110 for this week. It's gonna stay open, and then it's gonna close again, all right? So if you guys have one week to think about it. A few things I'd like to, to tell you. There is one guarantee. If you are, if you are, um, uh, if you're not happy, if you go into the platform and you're part of the, the first lesson, which is gonna happen one week after the, the, the registration period ends, and you're not happy with it, you, you have the right for a full refund without any question. Your money will be given back to you if you're not satisfied or not happy, 100%. Even the credit card charge will probably assume that part. But you know what? I don't think I have had any return so far, and this is the seventh time. For the Brazilian course, is the, is the fourth or fifth time because I also done the uh, world music course. And we went back to the Brazilian course because more people have shown interest for that one. I think from the 200 and some students that we've had in the past, um, a way more than half were uh, interested in the Brazilian course. Um, so going on, another thing is uh, the 10 first people that sign up, uh, I personally give my word to uh, give you a private lesson once the course has reached its end. I'll give you a personal continuation, sort of a trampoline, that once you've done the course, uh, we'll do a session, just you and I, private session on, on Zoom or Skype, 
uh, and then I can assess, you know, uh, even plan, do a planning of your objectives, how you can reach them, and uh, do just a course overview. Because the lives are done with the students of the course, so this would be a private, just you and I, for the 10 first people that uh, go ahead and show interest and jump in. Um, well, one of the things I would like to let you know about some of the guys that have done this course before. So there's one major U.S. guitar player who has become one of my students, and uh, we did several private sessions, uh, in fact, and uh, he's got a video, or more than one video, out on the internet with more than a million views. This guy is, kind, is quite, a, quite a trick, and he decided to uh, learn Brazilian guitar and flamenco, and uh, he ended up stumbling upon my videos on YouTube. And uh, I asked him to just say a word about my teaching style. So I asked Justin King to uh, post a testimonial here that you guys can enjoy. So. This is Justin King. I wanted to uh, tell you a little story about uh, Felipe Coelho, who I have been taking lessons from now for a few months. Um, I am a dad gad player, but I decided uh, recently to start learning really how to play in standard tuning. And also, <clears throat> I'm self taught and I never learned how to read music or really learned anything about guitar theory. So I decided I, I kind of wanted to go back to the drawing board and, and learn some of those things and, and kind of expand my knowledge of the instrument and of music in general. <clears throat> and I would say that uh, Felipe is uh, somebody who, um, it's, it's, it's hard to find a teacher as, as, as comprehensive uh, and, and, and sort of sensitive as, as he is. He really understands how to work with people, not only how to um, help people learn the guitar or learn music theory, but actually how to help people learn anything. Um, and that I think is the mark of a great teacher. Um, and so for somebody like me who has an established history as a guitar player to work with somebody who really has that, that uh, knowledge, both as a, as a musician, but also as a teacher, um, it's been really incredible. So uh, I just highly recommend uh, Felipe for anybody who's looking to expand their musical knowledge um, and their knowledge of the guitar and uh, yeah, thanks for listening and I hope you guys uh, enjoy learning from from him. Cheers All right, that was great Justin King speaking to us and uh, as I was saying guys one more very important note to tell you is that um, as we started this community uh, and uh, the, the course has shown quite some success. We decided to, uh, after this year, we're gonna make a yearly platform. But for the students that get in up until now and the past ones from the seven previous courses, they all still going to enjoy the lifelong access. So this is the last opportunity for you to enjoy this lifelong success. And this has been fun because some of the students that I have today that, are work, that work with me privately, they have attended to this course before. So within the, the sessions sometimes, I tell them, go into the platform. I have uploaded a new, a new arrangement and they can actually go back there. And they even forgotten about it. And they can actually just go back there, plug in their email, and they have access to all those lessons which I intend to keep feeding. Right? So once again, guys, just so you understand, I charge 50 bucks per lesson. For 12 hours, that would be 900 bucks. And plus a hundred dollar a year community, uh, you would have, uh, you'd paint at a thousand dollars a year. And this course is only going for 110 lifelong access with eight private sessions with me. I should, I haven't even included the eight private sessions because it should be, yeah, I made the wrong calculation. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you add one, uh, eight more hours to that calculation, it's gonna be way over, way over the top. So that means that it's a really an un unmissable opportunity. I only open once a year. So I hope that you guys, uh, you know, realize that uh, this is really a, a great opportunity for you to learn the Brazilian guitar with me. Uh, I would not miss if I were you. And uh, that, that's it. Boom. Word music. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who are interested also at the end, uh, 
in this opportunity, I think for 30 or 40 bucks more, you can actually get the World Music Guitar Course, which adds the rhythms of tango, gypsy jazz, uh, basics of Indian corner call, and especially uh, salsa. Salsa and uh, what was that? Flamenco. That's the, that's the cool part. For those of you guys for whom money is not much of a problem and you just want to invest in, in your self-development musically, go ahead and get the world music course because then you have all the flamenco rumba lessons, all the Gypsy Kings lessons, the bulerias and the fandangos. You got all that stuff, uh, the salsa, and uh, the chamamé is part of the Brazilian already. So there's a lot of information there that, guys, I'm just basically giving this away for you, right? In two sessions with me, two private sessions with me, you'd already pay for the course, you know? So why not get it, you know? My students that are working with me today, they don't get it because they've already gotten it. <laughs> That's why they don't get it, is because they have lifelong access to it. And they have gotten it in the past. Many of the students that I work with today are people that I met during the course and they simply uh, enjoyed, I guess, my teaching style and they just decided to keep working with me. Um, maybe I'll show you another one of them. Maybe I'll let um, Maciek, the Polish guy from... Uh, Tyler, Tyler sitting here. Tyler is... is uh, England. Tyler, Tyler is here. Look at that, look at that. Ta ta hey, I'm a living legend, look at that. No, I'm, come on, thank you, man. Uh, but uh, Tyler, is, we have become good friends uh, from this uh, whole, you know, guitar uh, culture and I've been helping him out uh, and there has been quite a transformation happening. The other day he sent me a video of uh, doing a, a presentation in California and he was uh, playing bossa nova and sambas and actually singing in Portuguese. So this guy has taken this to a serious level and he's uh, transforming himself uh, culturally, I would say, as, as I did, you know, when I was, fell in love with flamenco. Because to me, it's not fair for me to talk about Brazilian music to you guys, because of course I'm Brazilian, but I have learned flamenco. And that's a proof that through the system of breaking up and analyzing things, any person from any country can actually learn Brazilian music. So I'm inviting you on the boat, right? We're going out for a ride, for a four month ride. I can give you my promise, guys, if you do what I tell you to do, in these exercises in this platform, you will be an authentic guitar player in the Brazilian style. So the boat has its door open from this point and it's gonna stay open for one week. You guys are welcome to reach out, make questions. You know, uh, I have a lot of testimonials. I could have done this whole hour just with testimonials. I have about 15 of them. Uh, by the way, Tyler, you could record me a testimonial, man. I need to ask you to, <laughs> for that. <laughs> you, uh, that you can teach how to sing. Oh yeah, I can, can I? <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's because uh, Tyler is, uh, has been singing um, and uh, some of his singing has been, um, I've been helping him to uh, put the, the entries of the syllables and the notes in a syncopated beat sometimes, which is the characteristic of the Brazilian style. And uh, with my help, I've been, you know, I don't want to sound like, you know, it's because of me or whatever. But I've been very honored, you know, to say that I've been able to help him go from one place to another, to another level on this art form of the Brazilian guitar. And uh, just about the Brazilian guitar, quick story I wanted to tell you that I forgot in the beginning. But uh, why learn the Brazilian guitar if you don't already like it? But here's a living experience that I had when I graduated from my master's degree in Atlanta. I was living in Atlanta back then. I had a scholarship that I used to get 500 bucks a month back in 2003 or no, 2005, I think it was. And um, that money, I mean, it was not too much money, but it was crucial, you know, for my rent. And uh, I was really afraid of how I was gonna support myself once I was done with school, as, once I was out of the school duties. So uh, when that happened, I started offering to, to play in all kinds of places, trying to get gigs. And I had a steel string electric guitar and I had a hollow body jazz guitar and I had my Brazilian guitar. And I did not know, I didn't see this coming, but I ended up getting work seven days a week. I was gigging because I knew how to play Brazilian guitar. There was a lot of guys playing the electric guitar out there, a lot of jazz monsters playing out there, and I could not compete. You know, I was a 23 year old, young, scared kid with, you know, a Brazilian guitar under his arm, and that was, that just carved my path. So what I'm saying, this, uh, the reason, what, what I'm saying to you guys is that this is a beautiful culture that sells out there, that is passionate and that people love. Uh, I've had requests for people to ask me to record in my own Brazilian style 
uh, tunes that are, you know, American tunes or whatever tunes, uh, when the Brazilian style, that's something that uh, is just hot in the market and people just love the color, the colors, the African influence, the drumming, the liveliness. And that's what Brazilian music is all about, is that rhythm that really, you know, touches people and makes people move. So that's why you should know it, is because even if you don't want to become a Brazilian guitar player, you can add all this juice onto your style and you want, you know, just to make it become more colorful, you know, and more lively. So that's what it's going to do to you, I believe, you know. You can get the rhythms, the techniques, the right hand techniques, the melodic styles, the piccolo technique, which is used to play melodies. So uh, to play melodies like that, uh, there's just so much that it adds to the table, that brings to the table. And that's uh, what's helped me uh, make my own artistic signature. I have released eight records and all of these records are heavy into Brazilian music, but many different styles, Brazilian jazz, Brazilian classical music, Brazilian chamber music, uh, Brazilian, uh, even Brazilian hip hop, who was my uh, 2020 record, Wanamazi, which actually hit big radio, st radio stations here in Brazil. It was a great, great uh, achievement for me, so I'm very excited about that. And um, you guys are welcome to know my discography. It's all up on Spotify and, uh, and uh, iTunes, and even on YouTube. I would like to kindly ask you guys to support my, my work by subscribing to my channel. I have uh, been posting lots of uh, free content to teach you guys and inspire you guys, mostly my performances, which is really why I'm here is I would like to, to show the Brazilian guitar, my Brazilian guitar as well, my voice, my take, to the world, you know. So I created in my channel a list called Brazilian Guitar, where I perform and I try to record every month or other month, I try to record one special piece from the Brazilian repertoire and add my personality to it. And uh, it's become quite a success. I've seen some of those videos there get to up to 50,000 views, uh, 23,000 views, the other one, and 10,000 views on the Tico Tico, so it's growing beautifully and I'm so thankful to you guys. I really appreciate you guys being here from all my heart. I appreciate you taking the time. And um, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, um, trying to, how do you say? Trying to give it back to you guys by doing this course. This is just a way I've noticed that uh, I could gather people and, and have them learn from one recorded platform that would cost me, uh, you know, very little and it would solidify things there and people can just go drink from that fountain and pay way, 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 way less than my hourly, uh, my hourly you know, charge or whatever. Uh, so this is the, the chance, guys. The card, uh, the, the subscription period ends a week from today. You guys have uh, a week to think about it. You get your refund. The 10 first buyers will get a free lesson from me personally one-on-one -on -one after the four months of the course period is over. Again, you do have eight lives uh, happening during four months, lives every two weeks. Uh, the course is going to start, the first meeting is going to start a week after the subscription period. So that gives you guys time to watch the first modules on basics of fingerboard, interval, chord construction, and rhythm. Uh, you see some of what we've done here at the syncopate syncopation, but we're going to build much, much, much deeper. We're going to dive much deeper. <laughs> going into styles like, for example, um, a fauchette. so much. Um, we're gonna have, uh, what was I doing? <laughs> I lost train of thought. But yeah, guys, you're invited. The door is open. Make, make, uh, make uh, good use of this opportunity. And I hope to make some new friends as I have made many here in these past three or four years that I've been doing this. It's been a great experience. The course is maturing. The course is growing. And this is the last time you can get for a lifetime access and enjoy all the future arrangements I'm still going to feed in there. This is a lifetime opportunity, guys. For 110 bucks to have access to all of the PDF tabs arrangements that I'm gonna post in the future, you know, I can't, that's, that's all I can say, you know, I'm done. 
now it's on you. All right, guys? So anything here? And you did give today a blessing in Brazilian music. Thank you, brother. How can I get the artist's recommendation? Dá o PDF para eles. The PDF is already there. The artist recommendation is on the PDF that has been given the link uh, here up above. But I'm going to ask our engineer here to uh, write again the PDF. The PDF that I'm giving you guys today has three things, all right? Has all the content that we covered today. Syncopation, bossa nova, two beat, two beat clave, bossa nova, four beat clave, and your first samba clave. And then on to the course, you're going to have the second and third samba claves, samba de bêbado, samba, Latin samba, samba jazz, and then you're going to have uh, afoxé, you're going to have samba de partido alto, you're going to have baião, you're going to have chamamé, and I believe that's it. <laughs> that's a lot of rhythms. So all of that is waiting for you up inside that door. Uh, and, oh yeah, and the PDF also has the My Skinada arrangement that I have personally written and it is, uh, it is uh, part of the selection of arrangements from the course. I have never given anything for free like this today. This is the first time that I'm giving uh, so much stuff like that that I wrote, you know, just giving it away for free. And within that PDF of the information, at the end there's a list of artists that you guys should listen to in order to get to know for real Brazilian music, unless you want to just be a fake knower, you know, one of those who comes at the party and be like, yeah, I love Brazilian music, woohoo, woohoo, you know, and knows, knows nothing, you know, can't tell Joe Beam from Anita. <laughs> All right, this is great. All right. So, currently learning the classics, I will come to you when I'm ready for the next level. Great stuff, Jigs. Great stuff, Jigs. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. All right, so this is the last time we have the lifelong access. As of next year, when I do this uh, course opening again, it's going to be a new system where you pay yearly for access. All right, so guys, jump into this opportunity, all right? Mm -hmm. Deal? Yeah, Katarzyna is asking something. Can you answer? O curso é adequado para iniciantes, mas ele é em inglês, né? Mas é adequado para iniciantes. It is adequate for beginners, absolutely, because it goes from zero, it goes from zero. Absolutely adequate for for the the beginners. Yes, it's okay. not it's not for. Bram, uh, the word music is is on the, after you click on the link. You oh, I didn't find the world music. Tá falando com ele? Yes. Uh, after you click on the link. Fala, uh, fala aqui, ó. Ele tá te ouvindo mal. After you click on the link I sent, uh, you will be redirected to the hotmart, which is the platform we use for the courses. And there, on the mm. checkout, just after the checkout, you have an option. Uh, world music guitar course. I want to take the opportunity. And my chef, I'm going to show for you guys. Just give me a second. I'm going to. Yeah, it's not tough to show. My... Bram, welcome, bro. Nice to meet you. Nice. To see you. I saw your plane and I liked it. Good feeling, man. Congratulations on your plane, brother. Yeah. Keep that up. Keep that up. I hope to be working with you soon. Uh, so what Emerson was saying is that uh, when you go to that link down below uh, at the checkout, there's an option that says, "I would like to take advantage of this option." to uh, acquire the World Music Guitar Course. And it's a, it's a promotion, and so it's just a little bit more and you get the, the, that course, which if it wasn't through that opportunity, it would cost a little bit more. All right, thank you so very much. Thank you, Aquatu. The course is intermediate to advanced. Is there a course for beginners at all? Please, love and peace. The course says intermediate and advanced? Uh, I did not know that. No, 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 no it should not. All right, guys, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, I kindly ask you to sign up for this channel. Speaking as a student in the course, thank you. The course is appropriate for various levels. Thank you, Tyler. Just to change the course, welcome, Nicholas. Schlin, look at who looks there. I remember fondly doing this course and recommend it to everyone. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. 
guys I'll be catching up catching up with you all the new students here within a week I'm very excited that you guys are signing up this is gonna be a fun moment uh, and uh, I'll see you in there see you in the course in the